Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. Recently did a review on this guy and it's the Vivabright L1. Cute little projector, kind of targeted towards kids by, you know, the cutesy design. And it's pretty bulletproof. But um, in the past video I reviewed it, and this time we're actually going to pop it open and see what's inside. So there's four screws, just undo those. Now you are going to need quite a thin, long screwdriver. And this guy is a Phillips number 0x3. Come on. There you go. And we're just going to pop this open. Hopefully this just kind of pops open. Yeah, it's starting to wiggle loose. And there we go. So the top just comes right out. And there's just a little captive button for the power. And you can see the the output or the I/O jack in the back. There's actually an extra one that's not punched out. So maybe they were thinking of adding composite video or something. Uh, maybe that's an antenna input, or I have no idea. Um, just speculating. But yeah, they obviously plan to have an extra jack or hole there for something. Um, plastic is white and it's just painted silver. So if you scratch this. You are going to see that white plastic underneath. But yeah. Actual quality of the plastic itself. It seems to be ABS. And it's actually really strong. And you know they put uh, molding supports all around the place. So this is yeah going to take quite a beating. And more interesting than that. Is the actual electronics we get a first peek at. And here you can see. Let's just see one of the screws did not pop through. There we go. So here you could see the main board itself. It actually appears to be two boards. One is like an I.O. board with all the jacks and the SD card and the IR and all that. And then the second board, which is up top here, has a USB, HDMI. And this seems to be doing pretty much everything. So here's the power button right here. We have some sort of switching regulator. Um, looks like a linear regulator, maybe just a transistor. We have a lot of random pads. That's interesting. Like all over the place. Test pads, I'm guessing. You can kind of see already what's happening. This is going to be a mirror. And so everything's going to be firing up from the bottom. Let me just get in frame there. Everything's, the image is going to be firing up from the bottom. It's a 45 degree mirror and out through the lens. You can see the entire lens is adjusted via this little semicircle. You can see it goes in and out. So let's just see how is this attached. I'm not seeing any screws, interestingly enough. I'm seeing like way down in there there's some screws. But you have to get this board off first before you can actually reach those. Okay, so how is this held in? Interesting. Okay, so it slots in like that. So you probably have to, well, carefully. There. Yeah, let's just undo the ribbons first. I'm afraid I'm going to damage something. This rib ribbon is quite a tight fit. It's like squeezing right up against there. It looks like there are... Oops. <laughs> the jack came right along with the plug. Let's just fit that back on there. And pretend that that never happened. There we go. <laughs> So it looks like there are plastic standoffs that this board goes into, and then it'll slide into this retaining bracket. Let's just carefully get these ribbons off so that I don't rip anything. There we go. Toothpick to the rescue. Okay, let's just see. Is this still like...
Hmm. And there's some wires that are hard soldered. These are obviously going to be for the LED. They're much thicker. So those do not come off. Give me a second. I'm going to see how exactly this um, board lifts off. I want to do it without damaging this so I can put it back together. So give me one sec. Okay, that was just wedged in there. One of the holes was really tight, this one in the corner here. So there's actually nothing really holding this board in other than friction. So yeah, now we can remove it. And I guess just undo this one wire here. Ribbon. You can see this is the LCD itself. And it... Let's just see. It's marked RX020T-1100... Dash V2. This appears to be just like a standard parallel interface small LCD. Nothing really special about that. So yeah, here you can see the bottom of the board itself. You can see the actual system on chip. This is going to be like the microprocessor that controls everything, the uh, user interface and everything. Here is a massively parallel chip. You can see uh, differential pairs going over. So yeah, this isn't just parallel this uses some kind of differential video interface this is going to probably be the video driver chip because it's right next to the the connector for the lcd itself and we have some flash memory this appears to be a serial flash chip so that might contain the firmware we have a lot of switching regulator goodness going on in the corner here as well as here very nice um surface mount inductors there Hardware quality is pretty good. You can see the main crystal oscillator. And let's just see. It appears to be 24 megahertz. This is a nice like half size SMD. Um, and then you just have your jacks there. And uh, right angle mount. Interesting. There's one more chip here. I, I'm going to take a stab and guess this is the audio amplifier. And this ribbon prob or this cable that I'm wiggling here that connects to it uh, probably goes to the speaker. Uh, we have two, yeah, these are the, um, the squirrel cage fans. So these two connectors go to the fans. There's one here, and that appears to be sucking air in from the side. And there's one here, too. I guess they both suck in. Uh, no, this is blowing out. Okay, yeah, I see. So the way it works is it sucks air in through the bottom here goes up through pretty much everything and then blows out this side here so yeah that makes sense okay so just gonna set that aside can't I don't want to have to desolder any of the wires or anything like that let's just see there getting to the point where we might be able to wiggle the whole thing loose <laughs> Somehow, there are some screws I see at the very bottom, but probably can't get to those until I get this top assembly off. So give me one second for that. Okay, so this piece here just kind of lifted up slightly, and there are just little tabs. You can see the daughter board here just for the IR sensor and the LED indicator for the power indication. No real need to take that off. I'll just leave that on there. See here, nice honking heat sink. Heat sink. That's going to be for the LED that provides the illumination. And let's just see what else. It appears that this piece, there's a middle shim that we're going to need to pull out. Um, let's work on that. And exactly as I thought, just a little bit of wiggling and pretty much everything pops out. Just going to remove this. Yeah, I was right. This was a speaker. The speaker's all the way in the back there. Take a look at that in a second. Actually, let me just put this down. We'll take a look at that now. Those are what those two um, screws that I saw at the beginning were from. So let's just take a screwdriver, pop that out, look at the power rating and the impedance of that. Okay, so now this middle part here just kind of slides up evenly over all the parts. That's interesting. And then this can come off. Ah, it's one of these like three watt. Um, I believe this is a four ohm speaker, three or four ohms. Um, and yeah, that's. And they, uh, they actually did some good attention to detail on this. 
There's a, like a rubber shock absorber here so that the speaker is slightly suspended so it doesn't rattle. Um, it doesn't transfer vibrations into the case. And you can see it's actually ported. So it has its own little enclosure. They actually went through a lot of effort for this. So yeah, sound quality should be better than as if they just stuck, if they hot glued a speaker in the side there. Um, so yeah, this there's actually some attention to detail. So kudos on that. Um, I can't really pop this open. It's hot glued and sealed. So I would destroy this enclosure doing so. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And just stick that back in. You can see the compliance in there. It's not mounted hard to the outer shell. See the threaded in insert from the top here. And I'm just gonna stick this part back. Okay, and also I forgot to mention the lens just kind of popped off. <laughs> um, there's some kind of grease on there, so I'm gonna try not to touch exactly. You can see exactly how it slides in and out. There's a sort of uh, barreling pattern all around it so if you were to twist you can kind of get this to go in and out there looks like two element lens one on the front one on the back there okay and here you can see the relatively decently sized heat sink oh here you go see all the fins there that's where all the magic happens. And this fan, you can see, it, yeah, definitely is blowing air right through that heat sink. So that's actually good thermal design. So that you can maximize airflow through these fins. And these fins are quite long, and there's some surface um, area detail in there to increase um, dissipation of the heat. So yeah, definitely good job on that. You can see the LED is just going to be on the other side of this. There's screws tapped into it from the other side. So let's just see. Don't know how far I'm gonna go into this. If I can get this open easily enough, then I will. Looks like there's some screws, so I might have to take off this fan. So give me a sec. Okay, so one thing I didn't note: the bottom of this board here, right underneath the SD card slot, there's a chip. That's probably some kind of buffer or level shifter chip. So SD cards are notorious for being 3.3 volt devices. Maybe the logic is a, you know, five volts or something like that. Who knows? So maybe that's some kind of buffer or protection chip there. There are a couple holes down into the frame here that, um, let's see, there's five of them that held everything together. You can see right in there as well. So this should kind of split open like a, some kind of delicious sandwich. Unless if I missed a screw. Nope, there we go. And okay, how how am I doing this? Okay. It's coming along. Pretty much everything's falling apart by now, and I don't want to get fingerprints or dust in here if I can help it. So let's just see what is the best way of doing this. Ah, interesting. So there's actually a thermal sensor. It looks like it's just, yeah, it's just jammed in to the heat sink, and that's just to keep... Ah, oh, there's actually, yeah, a little like plastic sleeve for it to go into, so it's insulated. Yeah, and that is directly in series with the LED, which just popped out right now. This appears to be maybe like a... 10 watt LED, something like that. I can see one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six by three, so 18 little tiny LED chips in there. And it's in series with this. So one, if it starts overheating, this will decrease the brightness. And I'm guessing this is like a, a temperature dependent resistor. And yeah, that works. You can see a little reflector in there. And everything's just gonna kind of come apart now. You can see that 45 degree mirror here. Give me a sec. Here, let me see. Hey there. <laughs> You'd see that mirror in there. Oh, I love this, this side view. Okay, so let me get my pointer. So, yeah, we have the reflective, um, like trapezoid shape for the LED. 
then it appears there's a culminating lens in there, uh, which just takes, because this LED is essentially a point source, well, a bunch of point sources, um, they'll scatter in all directions. So the trapezoidal mirror basically reflects everything upwards, and then the culminating lens on top of that will try to make everything evenly parallel. So all the lights going up. There appears to be a polarizing filter, maybe, it seems to be. That actually might be the LCD. Yeah, that's the LCD right in there. I'm pointing right here. So, yeah, you can see, well, I can see. It's kind of grayish, um, like you would expect um, like a color LCD to look if you remove the backlight. So, that, yeah, that's going to be a LCD. And just judging by the size, it looks to be about like a 2-inch LCD diagonal. Um, so that's going to be similar to what you'd see in, like, older phones and portable devices. So, yeah, it's going to be a lower resolution technology. And here we have... Oh, no, this is the LCD. Huh. Wait, wait a minute. What is what? Yeah, the LCD cable is connected to this. So this must be... Oh, I think this is maybe another polarizing filter on a sheet of glass. So I'm guessing the glass is um, absorbing some of the heat to prevent the LCD from cooking too much. And the LCD requires two polarizing filters. One of them is going to be on top of the LCD, and the other one, I'm, I guess they just stuck on this glass because it, the glass is not perfectly clear. It's slightly tinted. And yeah, if I can remove that, yeah, you can see it's kind of gray. Let's just stick that back in before I get my grubby little fingerprints all over it. Okay, and yeah, here you can see on top of the LCD is the little uh, Fresnel lens there. See, right down onto the LCD, it's super shiny, glossy, and let's not get any dust on that. <laughs> so just put that back. The mirror goes here, so obviously the light source shoots up, bounces off the mirror, goes into the lens. That's pretty much it. There's really not that much. I, I don't think there's anything that we didn't cover already, so I'm going to just speed through reassembling this as carefully as I can so I don't screw anything up. Okay, so we have the light engine mostly together. And yeah, this is actually pretty compact and pretty well designed. I really like how they um, have the LCD and everything, all those lenses, everything, just kind of relatively easy. You just have to be careful when you slide it back together that everything goes back into the right slide and you don't crack any of the glass or anything. But yeah, I really like that design. There you go, and we just have four screws. And let's fire this up and make sure it still works. Okay, so we're all back together. Let's just plug her in. Red light comes on. There you go. And fire this up. There we go. Blue light came on. I can hear the fan. And the image pops up there. Just... The... Yeah, this is going to be outside the focusing range, but yeah, if I were to go up a little bit, you 